Hello my nephews and nieces, it's your Uncle Cal here and which Batman Arkham Knight DLC campaign is the best? Oh, you, you gotta give him that hook! <laughs> now these DLCs can all stand on their own two feet, but how do they do when you rank them from sixth to first, starting with the worst of the worst? I'm pretty sure this DLC will be at the bottom of everyone's list because of one crucial word, tedious. This DLC managed to be more of a chore than anything. First of all, they make you do puzzles and God knows Arkham fans do not want to test their brain. And also, what the fuck was this? Why was this so fucking difficult? I'm not going to lie. This section this free flow section took me about seven tries to beat it was absolutely stupidly hard and it's just an absolute far cry from the rest of the whole game i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna say that i think arkham knight is the easiest arkham game but this was just stupid levels of just difficulty it's out of goddamn nowhere like you will not find this level of difficulty anywhere else in the game and can you imagine you just finished sweating your ass off beating this free flow section just to see the weakest ass ending in, of the entire like all the dlc the, i mean yeah you get to hear the riddler complaining and just generally hating life which is i guess satisfying you know he did he does do a lot of um things that irritate people and especially me you know, I'll give the DLC this. The Predator section at the start was average. I'll give it that. And average is the best that this DLC is going to get. The whole rest of it, it just makes the start of the Predator section, it just makes it look absolutely god tier compared to the absolute rest of it. But unfortunately, that's not enough to save it. I'm sorry. I was positive for a few seconds, but you know, I just, I just, it's just impossible for me to be positive. Can I start this off by saying, why the fuck is Robin allowed to do anything? Oh, yeah. It boom, boom forgot about that so how did tim get on in his solo mission without pops well he, he he's lucky to be alive to say the least bro i swear to god i am going to disown this guy from the bat family myself what happened to the badass tim from you know arkham city from well i was gonna say revenge of the sith from from harley quinn's revenge what happened to that tim who is this guy who is this bald ass twat no i this is the main reason i hate this thing and you know what the whole entire dlc is trash but the, the worst part of it is that he's bold i mentioned before he's not a badass anymore well he has moments i suppose i don't understand in harley quinn's revenge he looks he looks so flipping cool he looks so goddamn badass just goddamn destroying everyone with the goddamn stuff and then just like just not taking well, i don't know no for an answer i don't know what badasses do I'm, I'm not that kind of guy but still like yeah like but to now now tim like the whole dlc is basically just a therapy session for my man from goddamn barbara i mean I, 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 what happened to you man man you used to be so cool where's the hood gone that's, that's what it is actually just because now the hood's gone so his whole character just got derailed i mean I, i'm pretty i mean modern rocksteady seemed to agree with me so and you know what's even more disgraceful not even a two-faced boss fight at the end like i listen i know in arkham knight the two-faced boss fight wasn't that good it was basically like a reskin thug you could just invert and take down him to hell but like still there should have been something there should have been some kind he should have been part of the free flow combat at least at least that's the bare minimum but no he just it's just a cutscene, and you take him down like this is so unbelievably shit people you know what again i'll give it i'll give the dlc one credit the predator map the predator map in this one i really really like i really really like the map sometimes i use in the ar challenges i just go i just go into that map with batman i really do like that map you know it's kind it's kind of complex the way it does things and you know the i mean i mean with the catwoman predator map it's just it's not really much to say that oh yeah you did predator good you did predator good but like the, the predators the predator one at least the first one in this dlc uh like the robin one is just it's it's way better it's way better than the cat one at least that the cat one average this one is pretty good again it does not save shit it still came fifth but i'm just saying this dlc it could not get anywhere is that another fucking puzzle now we get to the good, now we get to, into the stuff I actually like to talk about, the actual stuff that I'm actually passionate about, the, the stuff that's actually worth your time. 
I decided to put the Nightwing one as the worst of the best in well in this kind of category because you know I just don't understand how the Predator section at the start in G <laughs> I just <laughs> I think in the middle actually the in GCPD is so fucking annoying I mean I'd have to probably say because you have to just sneak around behind everyone's backs and you have to well you have to be extra sneaky which can make it fun but it also can be it also can make it extra stupid so I'm just I'm kind of in a love hate relationship with it and you know the DLC mission I put on top i have my reasons to for putting it above the nightmare one but what i want to say is that i really really do like this dlc i really do like the location i might just say that in this in in this entire well, like all the dlc campaigns i'd probably put the location for this in probably second second on the entire list because i really do like the yeah the, like it's in gcpd i i think that's really fucking cool how like the whole thing takes place there like it just in and around the whole gcpd stuff and gotham in the day is something that you know it just might go into creepypasta I don't, I don't really know oh and of course the penguin the penguin i mean he's a decent villain you only saw him at the end there was no real boss fight at the end of it that's another big gripe of it that's another reason why i'm kind of putting this at last because again with the no boss fight it's not it's not rock steady we don't allow this anymore man come on man you gotta you gotta do better but you know still squishing penguin's hope of freedom was i guess it was enough for me to you know put it in what well, a good section i mean fourth is well, on in, in in first of six, fourth is not really good, but like it's like I said, it's the best of the worst. I meant to say that or the other way round. I'm so stuck. I'm so fucking stupid. I said best of the worst. I meant to say worst of the best. It, it was. It's not that deep, but it is to me. I wrote a whole damn damn script. And I can't even follow it. You see, I know I've pissed off a lot of people with this choice, putting Red Hood in third and not second. But here's my reasoning for this. You see, the only real reason everyone was so excited for this DLC and everyone rates it as so absolutely amazing is because of that sweet, sweet mass murder, which you can't do in the normal game. So, you know, it makes it absolutely sweet absolutely scrumptious now now listen i love this dlc as much as the next man i really do love love this dlc like i said starting from the nightwing one i'm going to tell you how much i love the the, the top four but the, but here's the thing about the red hood one it's nice the predator section the free filler sections there's not many things negative to say about them the like, majority positive things but the one massive negative thing i have to say about it compared to the other dlcs what were the ones that are above it i, I would have to say that it's kind of lacking a little bit of detail like the finer details the ones in the background that make you just go oh damn it rocks that he really did their homework about this character and just made you like giving you the full package of it what it's like to be that character like i said the whole red hood dlc thing it kind of gave me the vibe that you're just here to shoot people and dip you know what i mean I i'm like i mean i had fun I had a lot of fun, it's in third. What else do you want me to say? But like, at the end of the day, the DLC completes everything it wants to, just get you to shoot people at the end of the day. I mean, it was fun. It's, again, it's fun. I cannot expect, I cannot say that as much, so much. It was fun. And I'll also give you this, the Black Mask, um, the Black Mask boss fight at the end, you know what it wasn't the most inventive thing but i'll take it i'll take it over no boss fight at all and i th and i think it's the first one in this thing like in in this ranking that actually does have a boss fight that i've well, I've, that I've ranked and you know the boss fight i'll take it that was fun i mean i don't have that i don't think i have that high expectations but you know yeah it was it was cool the black master and the ending with him sending black master hell um I mean, I mean, you can't get more edgy, can you? I mean, what else do you want from a goddamn Red Hood story? I've pissed even more people off now. <laughs> no, no, I'm digging a bigger grave for myself, man. Oh, Jesus. Okay, this DLC was really, really fucking cool for multiple reasons. I'm sure the first one is really, really obvious, but the others, I'm sure, I'm sure you appreciate them too. I'd like to mention first that playing as this insane, crazy-ass bitch would always be fun, and I always had to add on to it, just like, add on to what well, the crazy bitch kind of stuff, but like the writings on the wall and Harley Quinzel talking to Harley during this entire, almost entire goddamn DLC is that finer bit of detail that I was looking 
looking for in the Red Hood one. And what I was mainly complaining at was not present there. But because, you know, I mean, Red Hood, he's going through his own demons. I think we all know that. But, like, still, yeah, the, the Harley Quinn one, it's just in every kind of aspect, it's just a love for the character. And I know WB absolutely adores Harley Quinn. But at this point, they're going to make me adore Harley Quinn if they, if they keep on putting in this effort. And the Predator, I mean, everything about this. I'm not going to lie, everything about this DLC just made me absolutely love this character. And I mean, the fact that it takes place before the Arkham Knight uh, story as well. Um, it, it, I mean, it gives it gives some backstory. It gives a little bit of backstory, but that was enough for me to love it even more. As for the individual Predator sections, free throw sections, I couldn't really find much flaws. This DLC is just so well kind of packaged in just a whole way of just showing off uh, just what happened before the story. It didn't need to, but they did. They, they were putting extra effort so, you know, we could uh, see this part of the story. And again, with the boss fight at the end with um, Nightwing, it was nice. It was, you know, it's a nice, it's disrespectful though. I'll, I'll give it that. It's disrespectful for every Nightwing fan out there. I mean, he's not a stranger to get his ass beat by Harley Quinn, but like, still, for a second time, like, Fool me once, you know. <laughs> you know, like still. Honestly, I think they should make it canon that Harley Quinn is Nightwing's kryptonite. I mean, <laughs> she's my kryptonite. Okay, now, don't be getting any funny ideas. Too late. <laughs> Did anyone have any doubts? Did absolutely anyone have any doubts? This. You know what? The Mara family is at the top of everyone's list. Everyone who's ever played Arkham Knight. And it's the top of my list. No one ever had... I mean, I'm pretty sure Catwoman's DLC is bottom for everyone. And Mara family is top for everyone. So I'm not very unique there. But I, at least I think, my, I think my Harley Quinn take was pretty unique. So I'm proud of that. But yeah, but if you've played this DLC for the obvious reasons, you know why this is top. I mean, it's the only one that's open world in an amusement park with Ferris wheels, bumper cars, and alien conquerors as, you'd as, as, as your normal natural park. But yeah, a matter of family shows a Batgirl before tragedy. And might I say, the Batgirl, like the Barbara and Tim relationship in this Stunham DLC was done a whole lot better than in A Flip of a Coin. Yes, you might say, because they're in close proximity, but sh bro, fuck you. Like, bro, they can still contact, man. Like, they can st they're still in contact, man. Like, they're still, um, it's not the, it's not the 1800s, man. People can contact by like goddamn phone or like goddamn earpiece or what, whatever the goddamn Bat Family uses. There's probably not even a name for it yet. Because of this fact, because of these factors, I think it's the best successor to Arkham Knight and not Suicide Squad. And I don't care if it takes place before Asylum. I'm saying that anyway because it came out after the night, so I'm just, that's all I can say. Just, I'm just trying to erase Suicide Squad from my memory. And I also might as well talk about the Joker and Harley Quinn boss fight at the end. I do think that this boss fight was the best out of all the DLCs. Uh, but you know, I mean. What else you what else you want me to say? Arkham boss fights, they don't tend to be too hard. If you want hard boss fights, go play fucking Elden Ring. You'll never catch me playing that. <laughs> I just can't. But like yeah, these kind of boss fights, I like them. So and I really did like this boss fight. And you know, it's my it was my favorite out of the all the all the ones in this goddamn game. But you know, that's just me. You might have a different opinion. I mean, if you do, comment down below. I'd love to hear it. You know what? Something I, like, I wanted to mention before the end of this video. That's something we can talk about. Starro. Yeah, Starro in the goddamn circus or festival in, um, in, yeah, in the DLC in Matter of Family. It's goddamn creepy, isn't it? To think that there's a goddamn star, like there's a goddamn alien conqueror that sometimes the Justice League themselves, actually most of the time, the Justice League themselves is like just them, like the five, six members of the Justice League, just them are just like madly underpowered to take down. Like he chilling, he chilling behind a little thin piece of glass, and people, thin piece of fucking glass. Like, but like at the time of Asylum, Asylum with, with that weak ass Batman. I mean, okay, wow, okay. I mean, that it just makes your skin crawl. Is that just me? I feel like it just. It's just weird totally to think about. Well, that'll be the end of the video today, lads. There should be a two videos or a video and a playlist that you can go ahead and check out. They're pretty good videos. You should go ahead and check them out and support me. Thank you very, very much if you do so. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.